Wonderful, wonderful. Praise God. It's time that we are together again. Glory be to the mighty name of the Almighty God for giving us this opportunity to be together. Like I always say, like you know, there is no space, in, uh, there is no distance in the spirit. And God is with you right there. And that's why uh, it's possible for, you, for us to call on the name of the Lord. Now, when I call upon the name of the Lord on your behalf, things happen because God is with us and God hears us all the time. We've been having a wonderful topic, uh, you know, which we had once, and, uh, you know, we'll get over all these technical things, but the Word of God is real and alive. When I preach, I preach live and spirit. Jesus Christ was speaking. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are alive. So we don't speak the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the, the logos of the Word. We speak the realm of the Word, you know, like the Bible says, you know, the letter killeth, but the spirit makes alive. So when we sp speak by the spirit of God, we speak life unto you. Life comes unto you. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for this time. Yeah, just uh, before I go into the word, I just want to say a word of prayer with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you will speak to us. Speak to our spirits and we shall hear you, listen to you and hearing you by the spirit, man. Holy Spirit. You give inspirations to write this word. Now I ask in the name of Jesus that you give me inspiration to speak and give the hearers inspiration to hear that we may all come to knowledge of Christ. Increased in the spirit to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. What a wonderful time to be alive. We thank God. Uh, we've been talking about the topic, God hears my prayers. God hears your prayer. But I want you to know, to say to yourself, God hears my prayers. I want you to understand that he hears your prayers. Well, we, we might have gone through some difficult times, which is very possible. That's very all right. We've gone through difficult times. I mean, Jesus went through some difficult times. When you talk about going through difficult times, he went through some difficult times. But God hears our prayers. Hallelujah. God hears your prayers. And I want, you to assure, I want to assure you once again that God hears your prayers. We write, we started by looking at the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 33, where God says, Call upon me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. It's call upon me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things, things thou knowest not. So God is not just going to answer your prayers. He's going to show you great and mighty things. And this is something good about God. Well, maybe you've wondered, well, well, I've called God, I've been calling God. We see all of that in the Bible. But if we know that God is not a man that he should lie, like Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, he says, God is not a man that he should lie. He is not a son of man that he should repent of this word. As he said, he will do it. He will do whatsoever he, he says. He will, he, will, he will make it to come to pass. His word, he will make it to come to pass. And, and, and when we pray, that's why we want to pray his words. We want to pray according to his knowledge, uh, to the knowledge of him. We want to pray according to his words because he wants to fulfill his words. He says, I watch over my words that I may fulfill it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So if God who cannot lie says you should call upon him, he wants to answer you, he will answer you. And that's what we've been looking at. And uh, we just continue in this line. I, be I believe by the Spirit of God, I I I'll just be I'll just try to round things up right now, just just to round it up. All right. Uh, we see. You know, I said uh, we're going to look at a few examples in the Bible of somebody of people calling onto the Lord, and you're going to find yourself somewhere around. You know, we, we have this five pillars. We're going to find yourself around somewhere around there, and then you see that God hears your prayers. There is that. You know, the God God made heaven and earth. He said in Isaiah, he said, is there anything too, too difficult for me? There is nothing too difficult for me. There is nothing, absolutely not difficult. There is nothing difficult for me. I am the Lord. I created all things. He created all things by the words of his mouth. By, just by the words of his mouth, he created all things. There is nothing too difficult for him. The Bible makes us to understand that the whole, the whole world in his hands. It's not just a good song when we sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's really got the whole world in his hands. And I know that God wants to hear the cries of his children. He promised. He promised. Promised and he, he will do it. You know, he promised and he will do it. And he does it. He does it. So I've been looking at a few examples of a, a few people in the Bible. Uh, if, you, if you missed the, the, the first part, because I don't want to go on to that so we can uh, go a little bit faster today. 
um, you can look at the, the you know, uh, you, you can, if you don't have it, you can link me up and then we, uh, you get the link and uh, you can watch it again. Um, the reason why I'm not making it open to everybody, there's only one reason, and that's because I want the people listening to listen properly. I want people who are in search of the word. I want people who are in search of an answer. Uh, I don't want to throw my words around. You know, I, I follow Jesus' principles. I don't, just, I don't want to throw my words around. You know, I don't, I don't want to show people how good and how I can preach. I know I can preach. That's not the issue. And it's not, I don't want to show, show people that I'm better. We are all learning under the, under the hands of the Almighty God. We are all learning under the hands of the Almighty God. He loves us all the same. We are all the same in the hands of the Lord. So when somebody comes as a big man, in the name of the Lord, he's a big man. Tell him, I respect the anointing of God upon your life, but he loves me me too. And he hears my prayers. Hallelujah. So uh, we don't want to throw the words around. Uh, Jesus Christ was given an, you know, uh, 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 a proverbs, you know, uh, what do you call it in English? And I, I many times these days, I, I think in German, it doesn't matter. Well, he was speaking, he said there was a man talking about a man who went about sowing his seeds. He was throwing his seeds all over the places. And some of the seeds were, uh, the, the fell onto the road and the birds came and ate them up. He threw some of the seeds, some fell into thorns when they were growing, the thorns just took them up. And he threw some that were in the, in the middle of the, of, the, uh, of the rocks and stones that were, the, uh, that were squeezed together. However, there was a few seeds, there were some seeds that fell onto good grounds which brought 30 folds, 60 folds, 100 folds. And that's why I take my time. I don't want to throw my seeds everywhere. No. Well, Jesus said, go preach all over the world. Go do it. Hallelujah. God bless you. Go do it. I, Reverend Johnson, I take my seed and I look for a heart. I look for a good soil. That's why I put my words. By the Spirit of God. That's where I put my words. Jesus Christ did not waste time with people who would not listen to him. He called people who will listen to him. He went up the mountain many times and expected people to come and listen to him. So those who came to him, he spoke to them. So when I'm preaching, I want to preach to people who are ready to hear. That's why I want to employ you. I want to employ you so very well that you can uh, you know, send these links to people that you know are ready to hear the words. People who are ready to grow with the word. People who are ready to run with the word. People who are ready to give the word out to other people who are ready to run with the word. The word of God is good. Praise God. God hears our prayers. We'll be looking at a few examples in the Bible. And I want to look at the case of a woman by the name Hannah. And, and that is in 1 Samuel. Uh, I, we, 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 if I, maybe if I just give some of this uh, uh, Scripture, scripture verses, and you can have a look at them uh, at your own time. Just have a look at them and, and, and read them all over again. They're simple words. These are words we have read before. But as for me as a teacher of God, you know, the teachers, the teachers of the word, pay attention. I pay attention to every single word because God was speaking. He said, no title, no dot of my word shall go unfulfilled. So I take care to look at every word. I don't read over the word of God. I read into the word of God so I can get the, what the spirit of God is saying. All right. In the case of Hannah, this was a, a wife of a man by the name Elkanah. We will read it. We'll take some time to read it. There are some, uh, some, some uh, study cases I want to look into, and that's why I'm not going so much over what we did before. Uh, you know, I believe you can just click in by the Spirit. So I'll look into 1 Samuel, uh, chapter number 1. 1 Samuel. If you have your Bible, you can also look into it with me. Uh, if you don't have your Bible, you can look at the, pro the, pro uh, the, the program, you can look at it again and, and, and try to follow, read the Bible, read the Word, all right? I just tell you the story of this man. There's a man by the name Elkanah, uh, and uh, he had two wives, all right? One of the wives was by the name Penina, and the other uh, was Hannah, First Samuel chapter 1. And, you know, he had these two women. He loved them. He loved them. It happened that Penina had children, so many children, so many children. You can read it. I give you an assignment. How many children did Penina have? Well, you want the pastor to tell you, the preacher to tell you everything? The Bible says you study the word. <laughs> study the word. All right? He had, she had so many children. But it happened that Hannah had no child. Verse number two, Hannah had no child. 
There's a but there, but, but Hannah had no child. All right? Uh, so she had, she, had, she had something she had to bring to the Lord. And she's been crying unto the Lord. And, and uh, 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 you know, the, the, we, we know sometimes in life we really, there's something we, re we really need. We really need it. We, we, we really want it. We really plead and, and going unto the, Lord, unto, unto the Lord. Let's see what uh, the woman Hannah did in this place. Verse number 11. The Bible said, let's look at verse number 10. The Bible says, and she was in a bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Now, she was in bitterness of bitterness of soul. Her soul was so depressed. She had problems. She really wanted to get this shame of her. We, we, you know, if you read the scripture, she was saying, God, if you just give me just one child, that, that will do. Jack. So that, you know, I'm not called a pagan. I'm a mother. You know, I'm a mother. She, the Bible says she, she was in bitterness of soul and went unto the Lord and wept so. You know, th these are some of the secrets of the people praying in the Bible. She, was, she wept before the Lord. She wept so hard before the Lord. The Bible speaking in Exodus, the Bible says, the cry of, 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 of Israel, of the children of Israel has come unto me. The cry came unto me. I heard their cry. They must have been crying unto the Lord. There are times you just, you just, you just go crying unto the Lord because, you know, there is no, you know, you, you, I, I, the Bible says in, in Psalm, I lift up to my, 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 my eyes onto the hills from where comes my help. My help comes from no other person but from the Lord. I lift my eyes unto the Lord. So his, her heart was cried unto the Lord. She was weeping unto the Lord. She was weeping unto the Lord. I know that we are, we are uh, Bible people and the Bible says to us in New Testament, you know, just speaking tongues, you know, so we want something from the Lord and we just come to the Lord. No, no, no. You see, the, speaking in tongues has its place. I speak in tongues. I speak in tongues. I speak in tongues a lot. When I'm praying, I speak in tongues a lot. When I want revelations from the Lord, I speak in tongues a lot. When I, when I, ha when I need inspiration from God, I speak in tongues a lot. When I'm going for meetings, I speak in tongues a lot. And, and God begins to reveal things to me even before I get into the meeting. You know, by the time I get to the meeting, I'm just rehearsing what God has shown me. Yes, I pray in tongues a lot. But you see, there are times when you're just when your soul is bitter and so down, so depressed, and you just begin to ask God, and tears begin to fall out of your eyes. Tears begin to fall out of your eyes. So the Bible says she wept so. Verse eleven says she vowed a vow. She vowed a vow. She made a vow. God, if you do this, I'll. She made a vow. You can make a vow. Somebody said, don't test the Lord by making a vow. It's not a testing of the Lord. You can make a vow. If you, it, it depends on how far you have gone, how, far you, how, how much you really want from God. I want something from God, and I want you to know, I say it again, God hears our prayers. God hears your prayers. He hears my prayers. Just keep calling upon him. And he made a vow. She made a vow. Now listen and listen good. When you're going to make a vow, the Bible says to us in Ecclesiastes chapter number 5, the Bible says, uh, from verse 4, the Bible says, if you make a vow, remember to pay it, to pay your vow. You don't have to. You don't have to make a vow. But when you make a vow, remember to pay the vow to the Lord. She made a vow to the Lord. He said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look unto the affliction of thine handmaid, she was afflicted. If you can look at all the sufferings, all this pain, all this shame I'm taking on. She was in shame, in pain, in depression. She made, she made a vow unto the Lord. And this is something you can do in your life. Whipping unto the Lord, making a vow. God hears you. Somehow we will reach God. Uh, we, we go into that later. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. The prophet Eli was looking at her. The mouth was not moving. So the, the Bible says, Now Hannah, she, speak, she spoke in her heart. She was speaking from her heart. She was not, it was not, you know, a lot of religious day, things these days, you know, he just call on the name of the Lord and things will just happen. I'm the head and not the tail. You're, you're the last person in the, in the office, in the, in the company. You're just sweeping the grounds and you just quote in the scriptures. I'm the head and not the tail. These are spiritual things. 
That's why you quote scriptures and nothing happens. But it's the word of the Lord. Yes, it's a spiritual thing. It, they are spiritual words of God. So you have to go into the spirit of the word so that it, so when it comes out, there's life on it. I mean, the, the word of God is not abracadabra. The word of God, it's not abracadabra in the Bible. The Bible speaking in, 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 in John chapter 15, Jesus God said, when you call upon my name, whatsoever you ask, I will do it. But we know how often we've called upon the name of Jesus and nothing happened. That's because it's not abracadabra. You need to go into the spirit of the word. I think I, I think I could go into that some other time. The spirit of the word, praying to get an answer, get it into the spirit of the word. Get it into the spirit of the word. The words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The spirit gives life. Get into the spirit of the word. And these things come from the heart. You see, the Bible says, take care of your heart because of, you know, you have to mind your heart, what goes into your heart, because out of your heart goes out issues of life. So she was sore and she began to cry from her heart. She was not just showing how well she could pray, but she had something. She had a body in her heart. And so, uh, so Eli, Eli the, the prophet, some say Eli, some say Eli. I say Eli. It's, it's, it's a Hebrew name. Eli, not Eli. Eli, it's not Eli, it's Eli, you know, uh, thought she, she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away the wine from thee. Put away the wine from thee. When you talk about wine in the Bible, people think it's just juice, you know, it's not juice, wine. We'll see that in the Bible. Praise God. All right. Mm -hmm. Put away the wine from you. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. So something was really bothering her. It, she, she was not here to do some religion. She, she went alone into the temple at a convenient time for her, not following some, some, some religious times. You have to, when you wake up in the morning, you have to do your morning, your morning prayer so you can, you know, you can take it. I've done it. I went, I did my morning prayer yesterday. No, she had something in her heart, so she went into the temple. The Bible says, a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. You want to get an answer? She poured out her soul before the Lord. She was pouring her soul before the Lord. She was pouring her soul before the Lord. You've won an answer to your prayers. There is a need for you sometimes to pour your heart out to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Now, um, just, just to add this to it, you know, and Eli answered and said, go in peace. All right, verse 17. Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Call upon me, God says. Call upon me. She has asked. And now the prophet is speaking to her. That's a real prophet. You know, he says, And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way, and she ate. And her countenance was no more sad. This was a prophet. A prophet spoke to her. I'm not talking about the prophets we have this day. They prophesy this, then prophesy that, and when it doesn't happen, they have a reason why it's not. It's not happening. Uh, many of these prophecies, you know, uh, I, I I hear some of these prophecies, and they say, "Well, if you do this, God will do this." When you say "if," it's that's not a prophecy. If anybody comes to you and say "if," that is not a prophecy. It's not necessarily against God. No, you can say "if," but when you hear "if." That's not a prophecy. That's a probability. I want you to know that, quote my word, if anybody says Eve, that is a probability. And probability depends on human beings. So if you do this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. I've heard, you know, uh, so much if. That's not a prophecy. A prophecy is, thus said the Lord. A prophecy depends on God. A probability depends on man. Like God was saying, if my people that are called, which are called by my name shall humble themselves, 
if, that's a probability, that's not, that's not a prophecy. If they shall all humble themselves, if they shall call up my, uh, uh, upon my name, I will answer them from heaven, I will heal their land. If, oh, that's a probability. God was not prophesying something, that's, that's a probability, it depends on man. When God spoke, when God showed Joseph a, a, a vision, he said, your, your family, your father, mother, your, 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 your people were going to bow down to you. Not, that was not Eve. He went through all sorts of things, but the word of God came up at last, and they came to bow, to bow down to him when he was in Egypt. So we see, I want to, the time keeps flying, but I want, so we see a woman, Hannah, with a sorrowful heart, coming to pray to the Lord. Just know that a sorrowful heart, a sorrowful spirit coming to pray to the Lord and shouting the name of the Lord. I want to look at a man by the name David. David. In Samuel, uh, in, in 2 Samuel, because you're going to find yourself somewhere here within these poles that I'm going to set down here. These pillars that I'm going to set down. 2 Samuel, uh, if you look at chapter number 11, I'm not going to read all of it. You can read it. You can read it. You've got a Bible. You can read it. We see a story of a man by the name David, you know, who saw a beautiful woman uh, having a bath or, you know, washing herself, and he saw this beautiful woman and, uh, you know, King David, you know, King, King David. And then he said, who is that woman? And then he got to know uh, who the woman was, and he invited the woman and had the dealings with her. And when she said, my, 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 my husband is uh, uh, Uriah, uh, David sent Uriah to the front, well, you know, to the front line of the war uh, so that he, he could be killed. He said it, he said it, he said, take him there to the war front where it's really hot. Please read it. Why am I saying this? He said, go there, take him there so that he will be killed because the woman, Bathsheba, was now pregnant from him, you know? And uh, that's uh, chapter number 11 and then chapter number 12. Now listen to this. I'll talk about David. I'll talk about him. Mm. And because of what he did, God said that, that child is going to die. Now listen to this. The child will die. Chapter 12, verse 11. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of my own house, and I will take the wise before thine eyes and give them unto thee, and all of that. A lot of things happened. All right? And he knew this child. You know, the, the prophet Nathan came and said, The child is going to die. Uh, verse 16. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping before, because of time, but read it. Read it. For God's sake, read it because I don't want to go into part three. I hope I don't go into part three of this, but read it. So verse number 16, David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. He was fasting. When you are looking for something, when you need something from God, because a lot, you know, these days we preach grace, you know, it's just all by grace. Listen, to you, I'm a grace preacher. Let me teach you what grace is. Grace gives you the ability to come into what God has promised. Grace is not a license to be lazy. Grace is not a license to be lazy. People who preach such things, they don't understand grace. Grace gives you the ability to step into the presence of God. Grace, dem grace demands from God. Law refers to, to, you know, law refers to what he has done and asking for reward. Uh, Lord, you know, asking for reward. God, you know, I prayed. God, you know, I do this. God, you think you want to impress God with all the th good things you did. The Bible makes us to understand in Ephesians, the Bible, you know, uh, the Bible speaking to us, he it says it's not, it's not by works. It's by grace. grace. Grace is the ability that God has given to you, the enablement God has given to you, the freedom God has given to you to step into all the things that Jesus Christ died for. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. So he fasted, lay down upon the, uh, lay down upon the earth. How long did he do that? How long? Now listen to this. And the elders of the house arose and went to him, verse 17, to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. He was fasting. 
They didn't. They tried to convince him. Don't let people take you away. You have. You need something from God. Don't be diverted. Focus. He was focused on the Lord. And I'm going to tell you why this man is very important. Why I'm mentioning. Why it's one of the pillars. We've seen one pillar. Uh, 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 Hannah, with a sorrowful heart, who needed something from God, a petition from God. And verse 18, the Bible says, And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. So David must have been fasting for seven days, lying down there seven days. And the servants of, of, of David, you know, uh, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, he spake unto, uh, he spake un we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. He didn't listen to them. He did not want to get diverted. He knew to seek the face of the Lord. Hmm? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So how will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead. Seven days of fasting. Seven days of fasting. And this is David. Mm -hmm. All right? But when David saw his servants, they were whispering, verse, verse 19. So he went to ask them, what, what's happening? What are you guys, what are, what are you guys talking about? And they said to him, the child is dead. Listen, two things I want to bring out here. Verse 20. Then David arose from the earth washed and anointed himself, that's cleaning himself, put, put perfumes on, not anoint himself, you know, anointing, not that kind of anointing. Washed himself, put on good perfumes and creamed himself. And the Bible says, uh, and changed his apparel and came unto the house of the Lord and worshipped. Hmm? Then he came to his, house, his own house and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Why am I bringing the, 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 the case of, the, of David? Because of the way he was praying. He was fasting, lying down. He was not mixing himself, and he had allowed nobody to, to, to divert his attention. He stayed focused. But this David was a sinner. He sinned. So we have two pillars. Now, Hannah, who was of a sorrowful heart, we see David a sinner, but they know how to call on the name of the Lord. He was not allowed his sin to, 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 to come before him. He, was, he, he knew to seek, to, to, to seek the face of the Lord. I want to look at another man by the name Samson in uh, Judges. I'm trying to be, I believe me, I'm trying to do my best. I'm doing the best that I can. Like, like we say, you know, we, we have all these good words that we put together. I'm doing the best that I can. Uh, the man by the name uh, Samson in, in, in Judges chapter number 16. Now, um, my Lord, let me tell you how strong Samson was. Okay? Uh, I look at chapter 15, verse 16, and Samson said, Judges chapter 15, verse 16, verse number 16, Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, I never knew ass had bones, but that's, that's a donkey. All right, praise God. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. This was a strong man. He was, you know, with the jaw of a donkey, a thousand men, boom, boom, killing them, boom, boom. What a strong man. Boom. How many? 150. A little bit more. Come, next. Next. I don't know how he did it, but he must have been a strong man. A thousand. A thousand. How many now? 750. I still have some more. Come, next. That was more terrible than some ninja, some Taekwondo ninja Kung Fu. I don't know what it is. But verse 16, now listen to this. Verse 16, uh, chapter number 16, the Bible says, then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there, and hallowed, and went unto her. I'm trying to be fast, people. Please read these things and get my point. We have two people already, Hannah, sorrowful heart. We have David, a sinner. 
All right. So went to Anhalot, verse 2, and it was told to Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither, and they compassed him and led wait for him all night in the gates of the city, and were quiet all night, saying in the morning, when it is day, it, we shall kill him. Are you getting the point? You want to kill him. And Samson lay till midnight, and I rose at midnight, and listen, <laughs> I want to, my goodness, I want you to know who we're talking about, Samson. All right. Where are we? In the word. Yes, in the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Verse 3. And Samson lay until midnight, and I rose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city, <laughs> and the two posts, and went away with them, the bars and all, and put them upon his shoulder, and carried them to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. What a man. What a strong man. He went to an halot. <laughs> And when he woke up in the middle of the night, he took the gates. The Bible says he took the gates of the city. We know what, what the gates look like. Took the gates of the city. Took the post. Took all the bars. Put it on his shoulder. That must have been a strong man. And he just went up the hill. <laughs> what a man. What a man. All right. All right. I'll, however, let me jump a little bit. However, he now liked a woman by the name Delilah. He liked this woman by the name Delilah. And the Philistines wanted to kill him. So they said to Delilah, now listen to this. Delilah, help us. Tell this man, I mean, ask this man where his power is. This man is too strong. All right? Verse, I jump to verse 6. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. To punish, to subdue you. We know the word, that's, that's what the, uh, the uh, Amplified say. Where is your power? So we can subdue you. The woman asked him directly. No, you know, so, Samson, where is your power? Tell me. So we want to subdue you. And Samson said, in verse 7, said to her, If they bind me with seven green wheels that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man, an ordinary man. Then the lords of Philistine brought up to her seven green wheels with which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait abiding with her in the chamber, and she said unto him, Samson, the Philistines are upon thee. And Samson, and the Bible says, he broke the wheels, as a tread of toe is broken when it touches fire, so his strength was not known. The woman, Delilah, said, where's your power? So if you just bind me with weeds. And then she said, we want to subdue you. And he went to her and said, just bind me. And after she bound him, said, the Philistines are here. He got up. Listen again. And then she said, please read it. She said, you deceived me, man. You deceived me. Please tell me, verse 12, uh, verse number 10. Delilah said unto Samson again, Behold, thou hast mocked me. You told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherein lies thy mightiest, uh, th uh, wherein thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes, that never were occupied, then shall I be weak, and I will be like any other man, ordinary man. All right? That was the second time. Second time, we are coming to something good. Delilah therefore took the ropes, new ropes, bound him with it, and said unto him, The Philistines are here. And he break them from off his arms like a tread. Second time. The third time, Delilah come and said, Samson, hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. 
tell me where, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou withest, if thou weavest the seven locks on my head with the web, and she fastened it with pin, all the story caught in his shirt, and then she said again, The Philistines are here. He stood up and went on. Third time. The fourth time, verse 16, it came to pass when she praised him daily with her words, urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Now listen to me. The woman said, where is your power? He said, my power is here. Bound, she bound him and said, the Philistines are here. He got up. Second time, where is your power? Third time, where is the power? Fourth time, where is the power? And he told her, told her everything. Said, if you cut my head, please read it. If you cut my hair, shave my hair, because I'm a Nazarite. The, 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 since I was born, nobody ever shaved my hair. Uh, so if you shave my hair, I'll be weak. Verse 19, and she made him sleep on her knees. I think Samson, maybe he likes women too. And she made him sleep upon her knees and called, up, called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks on his head. And he began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And he said, The Philistines be upon thee. And Samson awoke out of the sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he knew not that the Lord has departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with, with fetters and brass. And he did grind in the prison house. How be it the hair began to grow again? Please read it. I'm just using my words now to explain what is here. What kind of man was Samson? We see Hannah. Sorrowful heart. We see David, a sinner. Now we see Samson, a stupid man, an idiot. That's the third person, kind of person, an idiot, a stupid fool. The woman said, where's your power? Bound him. All right. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Mm. Mm. Then the Lord... Verse 23, then the lords of the Philistines gathered them, them together to offer a great sacrifice unto Dragon, their God, and to rejoice, for they said, our God, their God, had delivered Samson into uh, our enemy into our hand. And the people saw him, and they praised their God, for the, he, they said, our God had delivered unto our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, they had drunk, they, they, they've had something to drink, that they said, call for Samson, that he may make us sports, may entertain them. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made sports for them. And they set him between the pillars of the house. And Samson said unto the, unto the lad that held him, you know he could not see, that held him by the hands, he said, suffer me, help me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of Philistine were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport entertaining them. And Samson, listen, this is where I'm going. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord, remember me. I pray thee. Remember me. When you, God, please remember me. I said, God hears our prayers. We just have to know how to pray. God hears our prayers. He hears your prayers. That's, a, that's why the, that's a topic. God hears my prayers. We have to know how to pray. Like I said, that's another topic. But I'm just trying to go around here, I mean, to go as fast as possible here, all right? So he, call, he called on the Lord, 
Remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once, that I may, may be at once avenge of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on, uh, and on which it was born of the one on the right side, the other on the left side. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew when he was, when he was alive. Because of what? Because of one prayer. This is the third man I'm showing you, a stupid man, a foolish man. Do, you know, the, the Germans would say, Dum, Dumkopf. I, I don't know that in English. Very stupid, very idiotic. That's the third person. One more person. Two more people. I want to show you five, five, five soils, five, uh, uh, soil, five pillars, five kind of people. You've seen three now. Two more. Daniel. Daniel was a righteous man. In Daniel chapter 10, he was a very righteous man. And he had a dream. Just read it. And he had a dream. And when he, saw, when he had a dream, he began to pray. Let's look at it in the book of Daniel. Glory be to God. All the books are, my books are growing legs. Thank you, Jesus. I hope Samson is not there. Because if he was there, my Lord, I don't know. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I will run into the house of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, I will save him. Samson picked the pillar, put it on his head. A man like Samson, a stupid man. And God used him. God can use a stupid man. God can use anybody. I remember lately there were, you know, this American election, who is this and who is that, and people were saying this and that. God spoke to my heart, but not for the public. I told my wife exactly what happened. It happened like that. I'm not here to, to, to glorify myself, but I'm saying God can use anybody. The Christians are now focusing on man, on one man. They forgot they have to, to focus on God, and God can use anybody. This is a stupid man, and God used him. Samson. But now Daniel. So he had a dream, and he was praying. I read from verse, I'll just read it. The third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the things was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had under understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. How long did he mourn? Did he pray? Three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh or wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself. We saw anointing before, clean myself at all. To three whole weeks were fulfilled. The, he was seeking the Lord. This is more than just speaking in tongues. Shambara, kambara, shambara, kambara, shambara, karabara, bara, 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 He, it was a hard cry, a real hard cry. He didn't eat fasting. He didn't eat flesh. He didn't drink wine. When we say wine, the Bible, when, when the Bible talks of wine, it's not juice. It's if uh, the, the, from, from the Hebrews, uh, if you have a Hebrew concordance, it's, it's number 3196. It's a fermented wine, alcohol. That's what, it, what, that's what they were drinking. So if you, if you are so religious and you talk, ah, if, you, if you drink a bottle of beer, you won't go to heaven. So that bottle of beer is stronger than the blood of Jesus. The bottle of beer is stronger than the blood of Jesus. Oh, a cup of, of, of alcohol is stronger than the blood of Jesus. Be not drunk, we are in the wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. So don't be drunk. Drink, but don't be drunk. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be drunk in the Holy Ghost, but not in wine. That's not the topic. Praise God. So he said, I didn't drink wine. All right? Until three weeks were fulfilled. And then on the third week, I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, verse 7, for the men that were with me, 
the salt, the lead see the vision, but the, the great quaking fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained a, uh, no strength in me. He's been fasting for three weeks. You need something from the Lord? Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 All right. So, but, well, let me just jump a little bit. And then the man said to him, verse 11, And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto you. A man greatly beloved. What kind of man was, was, was Daniel? Greatly beloved, a righteous man. So we've seen a man, we've seen a person, a, a pillar, people praying, sorrowful heart. We've seen David, a sinner. We've seen Samson, an idiot. Or we see, we see uh, 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 Daniel, a righteous man. And we know the story, the angel said, well, for 21 days, uh, uh, from the first day you prayed, from the first day you prayed, uh, God sent me to you. What I'm trying to say is this. You, he was praying through until he got something. He didn't stop. He prayed through some, you know, the Bible said, be not weary, well doing. Don't be weary, don't stop. He prayed through until an answer came. And then the angel said, well, I, I was stopped by the king, uh, by prince of Persia, but uh, it was only Michael who came to, to, to help me. That's why I'm here now. But from the first day you prayed. But he prayed through 21 days. No diversion. No, he, he took it upon himself. He wanted an answer, and he got an answer. And he was a beloved of the Lord, a righteous person. That's the third pillar. Now, one more person I want to look at is by the name Elijah. First Kings, chapter 17. I just, I, I just look at it. We are here together anyway. So, uh, so uh, let's just bear together. Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew, nor rain, the three, uh, these years, but according to my word. Oh, a prophet. A prophet. According to my word, there shall be no rain. According to my word, there shall be no rain. And there was no rain. Uh, we just uh, uh, jump a little bit uh, ahead and, 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 and go into chapter number 18. Oh, my goodness. Did I close the scriptures? No. I will open it again. Hallelujah to Jesus. I love, I love the word of God. Because when you search in it, you find life in it. You find something. You find something. And I said, like I said to you, teachers, we... Uh, we, when we read the word, we, we, every word is important. We do, no, I don't read to tell people, I read 10 chapters today. What did you get out of it? I don't know, but the word, the Bible, you know, I just read the word of God today. I read to get something out of it. Hmm? From verse 37, chapter number 18, that's 1 Kings, he said, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that thou hast turned their heart again, uh, back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, consumed, and, uh, and burned the sacrifice. We know all of that. And the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. I'm just saying he's a prophet, a man of God with power. All right? And when all the people saw it, they fell down on their faces. And they said, the Lord... He is God. The God of the Lord, he is God. And Elijah said unto them, verse 40, take the prophets, kill them. Doesn't matter. Let's go to verse 41. And then Elijah said unto Ahab, Ahab, listen to this. I read that to show you this was a prophet of God. This is not people that just go, oh, Papa, Papa, you're Papa. No, this was a real prophet of God. No abracadabra, no voodoo, no nothing hiding here. I mean, the people went to him to ask, what is the next step? I asked the so-called prophets, praying, praying, I said, well, praying for America and the elections in America. I asked them, what is the next step in Nigeria? Nobody, nobody said anything. Nobody. 
prophets. No, tell us. Verse 41. Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat, drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Hmm, a prophet is speaking now. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of the camel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. A prophet praying. He cast himself down. Don't forget, he just called fire. Fire consumed them. The Lord that answered by fire, he called fire. He, has done, he had done so many miracles. But he was praying because of the principle, God hears my prayers. Look at him praying. Because some of us, we know you feel, well, I don't need to pray again. I'm already this or already that. And <clears throat> That's why I'm looking at all of these, uh, uh, these, uh, these, these points. Five points. Praise God. Water of life. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Verse 43. And said to his servant, go up, now look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Because this is, a, it was a prophet, of course, but this is the time to pray. So he went down, put his head, his, his, his face between the knees. That's kneeling down and crying to God and praying. I believe he was praying. And he knew God answers my prayers. I tell you, God answers your prayers. And he said, I, I, and he was praying. And he said, go again. I know, I know that my God answers prayers. Some people give, give off. They give up. He went for the first time, he saw nothing. Went for the second time, he saw nothing. Went for the third time, four times, five times. Well, let's forget it, maybe. No, he kept on. He, I know my God hears my prayers. By the grace of God, maybe sometimes God will give me the opportunities to, 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 to speak about how to pray. But now we see we need to pray. But how to pray, what to pray, what are the ingredients of prayers? Hmm? Verse 44. And it came to pass at the, at the seventh time, and he said, Behold, there, is a, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And Elijah said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and, let, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. The rain had not started. The young man had just seen a cloud, like a hand. Maybe in the form of a hand, maybe the size of a hand, like a hand. Some people try to do some spiritual, spirit, spiritual about, about spirituality about it, like a hand, because the hand is this. No, that's what he saw, that's the size, the hand. No spirituality about it. So if somebody sees a revelation about the hand, rubbish, no revelation, the hand. <laughs> that was the size. The measure. Mm -hmm. mm. Verse 45, And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he guarded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. What a prophet! The horse, the chariot was running, and he was running in front, and most have been looking back. And, All right, keep coming, man. Keep coming. That's a prophet. Power of God upon him. But he prayed. So we've seen five people. Number one. Number one. Let us reiterate, reiterate now. Number one. Who did we see? You remember? Hannah. Sorrowful heart. Number two, who did we see? David. Full in sin. Number three, who did we see? Samson. Stupid man. Idiot. Oh, you shouldn't say that behind the pulpit. You shouldn't hear that before the, before the pulpit. <laughs> Just, he was stupid. Sorrowful heart, a sinful man, a stupid man. Daniel, a righteous man, beloved of God. And the Holy Spiritual Prophet, all five. These five pillars of people, you will find yourself somewhere in the middle. 
So wheresoever you find, there's no more. You will find yourself in the midst of all these five. And if they prayed, you can pray. You can pray. And God will hear your prayers. You call upon the name of the Lord. God will hear your prayers. We've seen this example. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 22, the Bible says, Be doers of the word and not hearers alone, deceiving yourselves. We've seen people praying because they know God hears. Don't give up, don't stop. Keep on praying. Be, be, keep, keep, keep on praying, keep, keep on praying, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Keep on praying. Don't stop. Don't be distracted. The Bible makes us to understand in Psalm 123 and uh, uh, Psalm 141, the Bible says, The eyes of the Lord are unto the righteous. If the eyes of the Lord are unto the righteous and the righteous and looking unto God, your eyes will meet somewhere and you can look unto God and say, God, I need your help. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter, 20, chapter 65, verse 24, Before they call, I will answer. While they yet speak, I will hear. Before, before they, I will answer. When you have a heart full of something, you come to the Lord. God will answer you. God hears your prayers. Hallelujah to Jesus. I've, I've done my best to just jump and jump and jump and jump because I, I, I don't want to do, go into part three of this. I want us to get something out of it. Okay, if you look at the book of Mark, the Bible says, Be not afraid, only believe. Mm? Mm? Be not afraid, just believe. Don't move with the wrong people when you are praying. Don't stop praying. Keep calling upon the name of the Lord. I can't go into all of this. Just believe. And then avoid a lot of much ado. You know, the, the, the time you're praying, it's time to get, you know, it's not a time to, to, to be busy with this and that. Concentrate. Concentrate. Mark chapter 10, we read from verse, 30, uh, 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 verse 46. Don't give up. Don't allow people to shut you up. They may advise you. It's over. It's not yet over until it's over. Go on. Don't beat about the bush. Be direct to God. May God give you time sometimes to talk about how to pray to get an answer. But one thing is, he answers. Mm. 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 All right. Because, look, they prayed. They faced God. I want to go back to David before I close. Because I'll be closing now. David was praying. said, God, do not let this child die. But the child died after he had prayed and fasted seven days. The child died. And when he died, David did not go to begin to make a party, a sorrow party, a pity party. He didn't do that. The Bible says he went to the temple to go worship God. God, you are God. You are God. He went to worship God, he washed himself, anointed himself, cleaned himself up, changed his apparel, and began to eat and join the people. And people will be wondering, what happened? You were fasting now. Yes, because when, they, when, they, when you come, people don't know when it's an end. When something has ended, it has ended. When something has ended, it has ended. You have to face God and go for the next step. And what happened after he worshipped the Lord? Out of him came Solomon. Out of David came Solomon, of, of his generation came Jesus. He knew grace. By grace, so he, he was stepping into the presence of God, believing that God would do something. But when, you know, he knew when to stop. He knew when to stop. So just in case, just in case you pray and God answered in another way. When I pray to God, I say, God, I commit my day into your hands. Hallelujah. These are the things I want to do. Some of them walk out. Some of them don't walk out. I say, God, thank you because of those things that walk out. God, thank you because of those things that did not work out. Because I have committed my hands, my, my, my day into the hands of the Lord. I know that God hears my prayers. God will continue to hear your prayers. 
I believe you've been enjoying the word. God will continue to hear your prayers. He will continue to listen to your cry. He will answer you before you call. And when you call, he will hear you from heaven and show you great and mighty things. I prophesy life unto you. I prophesy peace unto you. Let the grace of God bring you into the place where you can ask God, where you can lay demands on heaven because you have grace. Grace of God through Jesus Christ open the gates of heaven to you. You can lay demands. You can lay demand of God. He answers you. He hears you. Hallelujah and amen. And amen. Thank you for watching. You can send this link to other people. There's a part one. You can watch it. You can, uh, and if you, if, you, if you really wish, you can also get in touch with me on Facebook or something, and I'll put your, your telephone number. Uh, I have a little group where I, you know, just put names there, and then I can send, uh, just put a link there when I'm ministering, wherever I'm ministering or something, and when I'm doing a live program or, you know, a repeat program, because I want to reach people. And like I said, I'm not just on Facebook because I follow the principles of Jesus. The man that was sowing his seed, he put those things that came to good ground, they brought fruit. I don't want to waste my seed. If I'm not preaching, what do I do? I go sit down and eat some, you know, I'm a German, you know, I eat some, some Wurst and Bradwurst and uh, have a good drink and then just enjoy myself. Go walking with my children or just go walking or go, you know, I just enjoy myself. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not constrained to preach, you know, I'm, I enjoy myself. I'm a minister of, of the gospel. So every opportunity I do that, every opportunity I do that, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to hammer your head with, with the word. I just show you with my life the way I enjoy myself around. But you, you can also preach by sending the link to, the, the link to somebody and let him have a good time with us. God bless you. It's been wonderful. And we'll see you again. I'm your friend, Reverend Johnson. And until the next time, say God bless you and bye-bye. The supernatural, the supernatural, the supernatural, you can do the supernatural, the supernatural, the supernatural.